Next question is from Wampi Iurado. What are the most undervalued exercises? Oh, exercises that are undervalued. You know what? I, I see mm. more people doing this now. Did we do an episode on this? I think we did. Yeah. I was going to say, if not, we should. That's a that's a, cool a while one. back, yeah. Yeah, so I mean- We should I, link to it, right? I, yeah, if we did. I, I thought we did. I don't remember. Maybe you can look, Doug, but I do think that's a cool conversation because- um, there's some exercises in the in the strength community that uh, that people shit on all the time, and I I think they are in the undervalued. Yeah, and you know you see them fall in and out of favor. Here's one that now I'm seeing people do that when we first started the podcast about six six and a half years ago, nobody did uh, sissy squats. Nobody did sissy uh, yeah. squats. Now this was a staple leg exercise in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Somewhat in the 80s, then leg extension machines got real popular and everybody stopped doing them. When we started talking about sissy squats did on the you, podcast- Did you hear that? Sorry to interrupt you, but you, you just sparked something I got to ask you. I've been meaning to ask you. Did you watch the episode that uh, Mark Bell did with the biomechanic expert? Yeah, I saw that. Well, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not, you're bringing, not the, I'm not bringing up the chest thing that I don't agree with. But he talked about sissy squats and comparing the way it, uh, it actually loads, loads the quad. Yeah, I know. But you know what the problem with that is? Is is you try to do this kind of one to one math with mechanical load to a specific muscle. Sometimes, and we haven't yet explained why some exercises build more muscle than others. Like a deadlift is going to build your more back than like a cable straight arm pull down. Now, I'm pretty sure a cable straight arm pull down is going to add more direct mechanical load to it, the lats. But I'm not going to argue that it's going to build bigger lats than a heavy deadlift. Well, I think the the case that we try to argue and, or think that it is, it's CNS related, right? Because if, uh, you, if you compare a sissy squat to like a back-loaded barbell squat, you might be able to make the argument, as this biomechanic expert did, that it te- the sissy squat technically loads the quads uh, more, but you can't, you cannot do a, a, a sissy squat nowhere near the amount of weight that you can load a right. barbell back squat, which the CNS adaptation. Isn't that the same argument as the, the barbell hip thrust versus squat? Uh, similar. Yeah, I know what you're Somewhat. Talking. Yeah, similar. Yeah. So, you know, back to the, the original question sissy squats fell out of favor. You're seeing people do them now, which is cool. It's a great exercise, great quad exercise. Here's another one that I see people do more now that. People didn't do for a long time. I would get funny looks when I would do this in the gym. The dumbbell pullover. I think a dumbbell pullover is so undervalued. Find me an exercise that moves resistance in that direction. Very few, right? Very few movements actually take a weight from almost behind you to in front of you in this pullover motion. That was a staple exercise back in the day. In fact, bodybuilders in the 50s and 60s would brag about how much they could do a pullover. I, I think it's important though. You, you, you're just you're starting to throw out everything and leave nothing for Justin and I. But you got you got to talk about no. There definitely is because I I would throw Turkish yeah, naturally right <laughs> uh, Turkish get up and the windmill in there. But I think we should uh-huh. more more importantly. Why do we think they're so undervalued? Like this. Why I think the sissy squad is so amazing is one the you have to be able to. Uh, hip hinge really well. You have to squeeze your glutes and keep them activated in that position. You mean you have to lock them, not yeah. hip hinge, right? Yeah, right. excuse me. Lock your lock your hips in place. You have to also have good ankle mobility and stability and control in order to do them. So, I think yeah. it, it promotes a, a, a lot of a lot of good things. The wind or the uh, dumbbell pullover you're talking about, such an, a fundamental thing you should be able to do. We should be able to have something yep. from above or behind our head and come forward. I mean, that is something that uh, we've evolved to be able to do. Oh yeah, we we throw right we throw with accuracy. That's an overhand you know kind of motion. Yet, how many clients have you guys seen or assessed that have lost that That's ability true. to do that? So oh, I, yeah. I think not to it's yes, it's a great. Uh, lat loading exercise that a lot of people don't do, and I and I think you see great results from it from a muscle building perspective, but just a functional perspective. Both those exercises, I think, are good fundamental movements that your body should be capable to do, and a lot of people can't do it. And so instead of not doing it, you should work towards the ability mm-hmm. to do it. And that I think the same thing goes for the Turkish get up. 
And I think the yeah. same thing goes for a windmill. These are these are not. We're not going to compare it to some other exercise and say it's going to build way more muscle or it burns way more body fat. But those exercises are are fundamental movements that your body should be capable and not just capable but good at. You mm -hmm. want to get good at it. And if you can't do those movements, it's a really good goal to work on those. And I think they have tremendous carryover into all other pursuits in the gym. Totally. Yeah, I think too that some exercises fall out of favor because a lot of people don't have the prerequisites and the mobility to kind of pull them off. Uh, but then they just get thrown to the wayside, even though there's lots of muscle building potential and value from those exercises. Like, for instance, like, uh, you know, behind the neck pulls or behind the neck press. Yes. Uh, something that we would. Uh, completely uh, voice against as we're going through our certifications and we're thinking about safety and in the overall uh, general population probably can't pull a lot of these types of exercises off but can it be a goal to be able to have that type of control and stability and mobility uh, to then be able to perform something like that which then would uh, stimulate uh, your muscles in a completely new way, uh, which then provides a whole new opportunity to build muscle. Yeah, it's and you know what's funny about that, Justin? If you look at bodybuilding routines of the late 80s all the way up to the late 90s, all of them included a behind-the-neck pull-down or a behind-the-neck pull-up or a behind-the-neck shoulder press. All of them. In fact, bodybuilders almost exclusively yeah. did behind-the-neck uh, 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 presses. You know what would be really fun is actually to create yep. a program that is based around all these undervalued and unconventional movements. Mm. Like, that's the whole thing. It's written around nothing but all these. It like, would be cool to do it by decade. So like a yeah. bodybuilding routine from the 70s, 80s, and 90s off of what was popular of those times. Yeah, I just think that there's, uh, I think the first thing is getting people to understand that they're, they're great movements. And then the, probably the next challenge that people will have because they are unique is how to program it. So mm -hmm. I think that putting together a program that is primarily, obviously it'd be almost impossible to do a full routine that doesn't have some sort of uh, you know, standard movements that people are familiar with. But I think we could write a program with a bulk of these unconventional uh, exercises. Yeah, and, and again, you have to, especially when it comes to the physique and muscle building world, they tend to follow what the winners and champions are doing, and then that becomes a trend. So like, I, I remember when Dorian Yates was Mr. Olympia, all of a sudden, everybody was doing supinated grip barbell rows, right? Uh, that That's because he did them and he would won. And he had these, these big muscular back. In the 90s, no bodybuilders did barbell squats either. Everybody did leg presses. You're starting to see more do barbell squats now. Why? Because you're seeing like the, uh, the Olympia physique champion. What's his name? I, I can't remember his name. He does heavy barbell squats and he's got these he's developing like these incredible legs. He also does deadlifts. What are bodybuilders now starting to do again? Deadlifts. So that's what you got to pay attention to. If you want to find exercises that are undervalued, just look and see what people did 20, 30, 40 years ago that they loved back in those days. And then you'll find some value and you'll see like, oh, wait a minute. You know, and again, I said dumbbell pullovers. That was a staple exercise. To this day, I do them uh, at least weekly. And I love the way that they develop my body.